We're gonna continue on uh, fully disassembling this engine. And, uh, one thing we have done different since the last time we used this tool, go ahead and zoom in here. I think most of y'all saw this on Tyler's motor where I took and uh, let's do that. That's perfect right there, hold it, got it. On Tyler's motor when we were disassembling this uh, camshaft plate, we took and uh, had to put a big wrench on this a three-quarter inch drive so we could use it to release some tension put a pin well looking at one of Harley's tools right out of the catalog we just went ahead and welded this bar on here and check out how much easier this is I'll go ahead and move it and then uh, you'll see here right there Brent yep. what I'm doing is just getting this up and out of the way and I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna rest that lightly now can you see where all the tension is off the chain mm -hmm. Per the manual, another thing we need to do is we need to take out these torque screws so that we can take off this plate and you'll see how we can actually remove these. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So now at this point we are going to flip it this way. Hold that. Before we go, we're going to move to a hydraulic press and press these out with some specialty tools. Okay, now we're going to shift this to the press. Those four screws we took out earlier were for this bearing support plate. I'm going to show this in more detail in a little bit. Alright, so Brent, we're going to hover underneath here. And something else we're doing is when you support something in a press, you if I have these press plates all the way out here, that's going to take chance of bending the support plate. You really want it to be as tight as possible without actually touching the inside parts there so that they have room to move. Okay, hold both cams there because they're going to drop out in a second here. What I need to do before I take it off here, and I could have done this on the bike too, is I need to take a paint marker and mark this chain so that I can go ahead and reinstall it in the correct direction. We'll do that up on the bench right now. So now our cam sprockets are out. We can see <coughs> I'm just going to point out some subtle differences that people get into trouble because they make assumptions that everything's the same. Can you hold up a couple more of those cam support plates? Real quickly, do they all look the same? Yeah, right? Well, the thing is, they are not all the same, and Harley's made some different changes. You can get yourself into trouble by using the wrong cam support plate. So let's go ahead and set those back down. Okay. And I'm going to just point out a couple things that we've learned and, and whatnot with these. So why don't you go ahead and zoom in here. Okay, right there. See that tiny little oil hole? All right, well that's pretty dang important because oil, now back of the camera up, we can just see how small it is. Back it up some more. Oil, let's kind of review what the cam support plate, you remember how important this is to the bottom end of the gear case on this twin cam? Yeah. Because we're gonna feed oil through, that's gonna go to the oil pump, it's gonna be used throughout, well inside this oil pump it also feeds right up through this channel, that little oil hole is what sprays oil out at the camshafts. That's actually forced lubrication right there, so it's pretty important. The other thing is, it goes up through here, you can see this plug on this, and it starts to fill some of these other galleys right here. So if I come through here, and I go across here, that's going to allow me to get into these. Do you remember this is what feeds the lifters, which feeds the oil jets, and so on and so on. So we've got some pretty important passages. On the B motor, on the balance motor, we have something else here, is this guy right here. See this hole? Okay, so if you look, the oil pump can build pressure, go across here, and that's what fed that balancer assembly, okay? So real quickly, let's grab, I think it's, uh, it's, it's this one. And let's just kind of compare these side by side. So do you notice how the absence of that hole? Boy, but wouldn't it be easy to mess that up? <laughs> I'm putting this into this video is I had a shop that just did an engine overhaul and I think the customer had brought in a cam support plate off of eBay is what the story was and thought oh yeah I got a twin cam support plate they put the motor together and it, it kept not building oil pressure and they were just really struggling it's like what is going on with this thing and found out it was the wrong support plate and I'm not 100% sure on exactly what was going on other than it took them forever to figure this out because they just weren't realizing that there were different uh, support plates tried to dig back a little deeper on that story and what it was was a 
A model Dyna motor and I believe the cam support plate was off of balanced and so that hole that feeds the balancers just was puking oil out basically just dumping the oil pressure and not allowing it to build up but regardless it was the wrong plate and it was a tough one to uh, figure out. See those deep channels or grooves in there? Well if you're if you've been around any of the metric motorcycles doesn't that look like that'd be okay? Right, because our cam chain guides, they're usually shouldered like that on the side. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and put this one on its side and you'll see why. There's not much material there. And that has quite a bit of force on it. Look at the heavy gauge of this spring that's holding tension on that chain. So these will obviously wear and they're a service item that needs to be replaced per the service manual and, and mileage specifications. Let's go ahead and look at the one, actually pull that out of the way. Here's the one on our motor right now. Can you see how it actually has just very minimal wear? No shoulder on that. See how it's really the same level all the way across? So I'm sure we can measure that per the manual and, and be able to check that out. Pretty quick come apart, isn't it? When I go on assembly, I have got to be crystal clear that I need to get these four holes super, super dry because I'm gonna put a Loctite agent. Can you see what its job is now? what holds those bearings in place. It's a bearing retainer and you see how it act, how the hole has access, correct? All right, we're gonna go back to assembly here. You can see our fasteners are laid out. First, we're gonna apply a medium strength Loctite to them. That's the way I like to do it, just lay them out. Just get each one of those. Okay, these are torqued to a real small 20 to 30 inch pounds. You're gonna see here we got a different tool. We're gonna go ahead and install these. Review here that plate has been thoroughly cleaned, dried before even considering attempting to install this. Just get them where you're just going to get them kissed, and then when he gets down, uh, Sir Spino just calls to install them in a clockwise pattern. This is still loose. I don't know if you can see that here, even though he's close here, it's not all the way on, it's just he's going to get really nice and close, and then the next time around. I'll go ahead and do the final uh, torque on those. For a second there, bud. Take a look at the tool here. Is we actually have, this is a torque wrench. See it? See the torque scale in there? So you put an Allen wrench in the back side here to adjust that, and this will click over and be able to uh, do the job right. You want to do with the tools, make sure that you aren't bent at an angle like this because you'll slip out. So you want to be really good and straight, which is right there. Go ahead. Okay, there it is. So we've got all four of those torqued in place, and then we move to the next step. We're going to focus in on here. Uh, uh, the other day, we took our cams out. And per the Harley service manual and every mechanic should know type uh, mentality is we marked our chain on the outside so that we know how to put it back on and not have any, uh, and run it in the same pattern, not have any problems, right? But before we do that, I'm going to uh, show you, I, took, I went ahead and I, why don't you zoom in here, we'll tighten up here. I went ahead and I painted the, the timing marks here. And with these yellow marks here, what we need to do is wrap that chain around and have those marks line up with each other. I'm going to show you what unpainted ones look like so you can see it's a little more difficult. Do you see those dashes there? Yeah. Alright, so obviously throwing a paint mark across there speeds it up. You're going to see Harley's done something pretty cool for us so that we can make it easier. when we uh, Once we press these into the cam support plate, we're actually able to view it on the other side and verify that we haven't jumped time. Because remember, we don't have a tensioner on there at this point. So I'm going to go ahead, go back here. Just make sure you can see. I'll go ahead and just slip one of these in. The chain mark means nothing. It can be anywhere. And then I'll just slip the other one on here. And you can see here that I'm not lined up. Correct? You see how I'm off a tooth? Yep. Oops. Well, maybe not. I'm going to take and... I'll make it where it's 
feeling like it's way out of whack, okay? That would be out of line, okay? So if I see how no matter what I do, if I rotate these around, I can't get the marks to line up. Right now, would you say that they're facing down? Yep. Yep. Okay, so let me try and readjust those. Did you notice that when you were off, it's significantly off? Yep. It's not like you're going, oh wow, I'm just a little bit. Even this chain is so short that even when it stretches, it isn't like it puts it a mile out there. I've never seen this. It's not that it couldn't exist if you had a really high mileage engine, but if you take a look at this, I mean, you are going to be out and left field when you're off. So you don't have to worry about it too much. Now, what I want you to do is go ahead and ro rock it back and forth, okay, and then rock it the other way. Okay, now try and center it up. Okay, so you feel really good about that timing? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so what we need to do from there, Slee is going to help me here. Why don't we focus over here on the press? I'll try and get out of the way for you look at that. I want to show you that tool that we were using yesterday. And this is a specialty twin cam tool by Jim's. Uh, Harley makes there's numerous vendors on here. But you see this cutout right here? Okay, that's pretty important because what that's going to do is make a relief for this. Can you see that? So I'm basically just going to set this up in here. This, these raised portions are going to fit inside the cam support plate here nice and perfect. Okay, so I'll set that back on here. And you notice how it's kind of free? Yep. Okay, well one thing that could get me into trouble, I'm going I'm to turn this around and show you. If this pin that you know we use to hold the tensioner, if I had this block sitting on here and then started in, to use the press, do you think I'd be having a problem? Oh yeah. Okay, so everything is about making sure it's nice and free and that we're not having any problems here. Okay, we didn't put new bearings in. Once again, this video, this was all about how to take it apart and how to put it together. It wasn't about all the replacement of everything. So I've got this nice and free so that I know as I'm pressing down on this, I'm not going to bend the plate or the tool or anything else. Then what I want to do is I have to be very careful since my cams are timed. I'm going to come across here and Leah, you just kind of come on the other side. What I want you to do is yeah, just support the whole assembly like that. That'd be great. I cannot mess up on my timing here, okay? I'm going to go ahead and square this up like so. And what our goal is, <coughs> is to try and figure out how we can get this assembly. Okay. We have another tool here. This does not need to go on both of them. All we really need to do, I'll just focus it back here, is on this one here. And then I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of just another spacer here to kind of speed things up. Okay, anytime we do any of this, we want to make sure that we just start to kiss, okay, and we see how, check the, check the plate. You see I can still wiggle that? Yep. But I have tension here. It's not like, it's not like I don't have a little pressure on here, okay? This is my chance to go, hey, does my chain, you know, make sure it uh, hasn't slipped. Adjust it. I like to try and get it right in the middle. Okay. Alright, how are we looking, Liam? Okay, this is really taking no effort. I'm just making sure that we're dropping down. You can see the whole assembly coming down. Okay, life is good. I'm going to release it here. Get this out of the way. Grab the whole support plate. And we're going to move back to the table. I talked about if you don't mark them, it makes them really hard to see. Yep. Just a real fine line across right here and across there. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I mean, and we're talking a fine line, right? Okay. Now, does it does it look to be lined up? How are we looking? Looks good. Chain might even have a little bit of stretch to it. A little, little bit. Okay. Now we'll go back and we'll demonstrate that tool that we used. Okay. We're simply how we welded this on now. We're going to take this, just take the tension off, put that like so. Okay. One last thing here is we have a snap ring to install. Okay, you remember how we talked about snap rings and how they have okay, a flat edge, okay, which is this side. Okay. It's a real sharp, you see how it's got a real sharp edge right there? Yep. yep. Okay, I'm going to flip this over, we'll get a close up. This is the money shot right there. Do you see how that side's rounded? Yep. yep.
Here's a great photo that shows a nice close-up of that straight square edge you can see in blue and the thrust load and the effect on turning that backwards. The thrust load would actually allow that blue snap ring to push up and off by not having as much real estate against it. So very important to understand thrust loads and direction of that when you install snap rings. Okay, the service manual is specific that they want the flat side facing out because that's the thrust side. That's the side that wants to push the camshaft off. I'm not going to go over the entire theory of this again. If you watch one of our transmission videos, I explain in detail about snap rings, how important it is. But what I do want to point out before I, well here, let me install this quick. We're going to go ahead and install our new snap ring here. And you heard that click? Yep. Okay, and I'm making sure that it's on there good and tight. I want to make sure that I cannot uh, move that around here, that we're good and solid here on that. If you're if you're in any doubt at all, I could come in here. If if I'm in any doubt, I could just kind of. Let's do that. How's that? See how I moved it around a little bit? It's in its track fully, and I don't have to have any worry about that. Okay. Okay. Where are we getting all this information from? <coughs> Service manual. <coughs> Absolutely. I mean, this isn't something to where we're just like, oh, this seems like a good idea. This is what you know every mechanic should do or whatnot. As we're following the procedures. It's our timing marks again. You can see the different uh, tools that we were using. There's nothing really you know, special or new about this, but I wanna make a point of this. Foc focus in right here. Guys, right here, this is the stuff that is so missed inside service manuals. See the warning? And when you look at the directions, you look at your checklist, people go, okay, I did this, I did this, I did that, and so on. And then they miss this stuff. And notice that the warning is before the procedure, okay? Saying safety glasses here, removing or installing, you don't want to uh, have it fly off and hit you and create an eye injury. But then look at this one. With the sharp edge out, install a new retaining ring in the groove at the front of the camshaft. Notice how they bolded the word new? They're trying to catch our attention. They're trying to say, hey, if you haven't got this figured out yet, we don't reuse these. If you don't have this figured out yet, do this. And then that's where it talks about that sharp edge. So that is how you install those.